so it's gonna be part three of this lathe conversion to CNC. So in my other video, I got it back in the garage painted, mounted, still cleaning the garage up. I got tons of stuff to do. But I'm actually putting out the mount right now. So I'm actually gonna have a uh, mount for the for the, the monitor. It's gonna go right here, there's gonna be a pole. And there's gonna be, I'm actually putting out a visa, I designed a, a visa mount for a uh, 40 millimeter tube. It's gonna go right here. But this video is about the carriage. I, I gotta get the carriage back together. Um, so I, I wanted to take it apart and uh, you know clean it all up, uh, oil it. Um, there's actually some oilers. Make sure those are good. Um, also, I want to take it apart so I can figure out how I'm going to actually convert it to ball screw and CNC. Uh, mainly, this this axis right here just doesn't seem very accurate. Uh, I don't like the design of how it tracks on a thing. Uh, plus, there's I can I can tell there's backlash in it. So, um, yeah, I want something really precise. So yeah, I need to do a ball screw this way and the carriage and this cross slide. Uh, so this is a chucker lathe. I think I, if you watch the first video, you know what I'm talking about this. A position chuck I can go around and quickly change bits but eventually I want to have this motor control too so I might have to redesign this or do convert this whole cross slide to something else um, but I'll need a milling machine for that so CNC machine should be coming soon the guy's cleaning out his cleaning thing out getting it ready but so in the meantime I gotta get this going all right so I gotta take all this stuff apart man what's funny is it's so heavy that even two guys couldn't pick it up. I had to use my engine hoist. So I'm going to take it apart in pieces. Hopefully I can. I don't, I don't have to break out my engine hoist again to get it up there, but... Yep. Uh, yeah, well, I like to paint it too, so I want to clean it up and paint it. Like I said earlier, there's like virtually no manual on mine for this thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this apart, and the whole time I'm going to be thinking about CNC, like how I can make this thing automated, this turret, just... So, besides cleaning, like I said, this is a part of my, my game plan to figure out how this thing actually works. Okay, just a couple bearings. Okay. So, I'm guessing these four come off, and hopefully this thing will just pop up. Feels good, though. I wonder if there's, like, a, some kind of preview. Like, like I said, no manual, so... <laughs> oh, actually, that one was loose. Okay. One of the things, cool things I saw about the Hardinge uh, lathe, the, I think this actually was a clone off that, that other uh, lathe, the Chucker lathe, was that when you do this, right, when you actuate this part, it would actually twist this automatically. There was some kind of mechanism to twist it. And I thought, man, if this actually had that, I could create like an actuator, you know, that would actually automatically do this with a motor, you know, that would actually turn it. But this, this thing, or Sugami, doesn't actually have that. So... Like I said, I don't even know what, I'm just kind of look eyeballing it. Well, can't use one hand, but I think I can maybe pull this out. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'd be pressed in, but you never know. Looks like it has a really large bearing, so it got it off there. Yeah, see how dirty it is in there? That's why I wanted to take this thing all apart. I mean, if I'm going to spend this much money and time on this thing, I might as well do it right. <laughs> Not like, I mean, because I could just easily just throw this back on there and try to use it, but, you know, it's like, why go through all the effort? Uh, you know, if I have, might have a chip stuck in somewhere, it might throw off accuracy. All right, so I wonder if I can get that bearing off. Or this come, uh, this might come off right there. Then the air bearing comes off. I don't know if it's pressed on or not. So, um, all right, so I got the bearing up. So the cool thing about this, when you when you videotape what you're doing, um, so in case I forget how to put the thing back together, I can see how I did it. Um, but uh, yeah, look at that. Well, I mean, a lot of this stuff is actually when I degreased it and washed it off. So, um, all right, I'm gonna probably put this in my ultrasonic cleaner. All the bearings will go in my ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not gonna even bother with uh, putting them on. Or, like, I might degrease them first, I'm not sure. Because it doesn't look like they're fully sealed bearings, so I can see the top. All right. Yeah, 
I mean, who knows how I many this thing was last re rebuilt, you know? I mean, this that's a 50-year-old lathe here, so. But the thing, the lathe had been painted before. I could tell it had been repainted. So somebody had done something at some point. Don't know if they got this far into it or what, but. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take off this back plate here. And actually, I might take this off now, too. The switcher, if I can. Okay, it looks like it's a spanner wrench here in the back. Um, so maybe this is actually holding this in there. Oh, got it out. So I was able to use my large snap ring pliers as a spanner wrench. So maybe I can, this will pop out this way. It seems like it would make the most sense if I'd pound it out this way and this was sort of just like a slip fit. Um, because I don't see a set screw anywhere that would hold that in place. I'm assuming this, once that thing is out, this should just pop out this way, and this should slide. Yeah, so a little ball bearing came out, so I got it out. Here's a shaft. I mean, hopefully this is, like, I mean, if you, some other person has a sugami laid like this, uh, this will help them out, but see what's going on. So there is a little detent spring in there, so that kind of locks it in place as it goes through the different motions. See right there, like detents right there. Um, all right, so I'm trying to keep everything together so I don't... Yeah, actually individual piles, you know, parts. Yeah, so I'm thinking that part, and I'm thinking this might be a good place to have the stepper motor. Maybe design some sort of carriage right in here. Uh, but I have to take it off to see how it interacts with the screw. I actually, I don't know if there's a ball screw. I think it's a, it's a 60, 1966, so I don't think they, I'm not sure if they used ball screws back then. Uh, more like a lead screw. Um, or like acne type screw. Um, okay, that's uh, and the gearing. I took the motor off here, the old uh, DC motor. And pack of grease. And yeah, that little motor, what it did is it turned and it allowed you to control the different uh, axis and it would go back and forth. So, uh, but it really wasn't for cutting, I don't think. It might have been slow cut, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, it's pretty tiny little gears. I think it was just for a moment, though. All right, so I got that cap cover off. And it looks like it's another spanner wrench thing here, but I'm guessing the cup is to... And let's spin the axis and see what happens. Does the screw come out of here? Let's go this way. Yeah, okay, so that's just basically a screw cover. So, yeah. See right there? The screw looks pretty good, though. Yeah, that's just a screw cover. I wonder if I can get it off. I need to find a way to get the slide off. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. If I can go far enough. Where it stops. Okay, there must be this. this must be the end stop. Alright, I'm gonna take this back plate off here. I got this rear cap off here. I'm gonna keep all the pieces together. Looks like a, it's like a brass replacement or copper. So in case the thing wears out, you can... Well, this will wear out before the lead screw does, so that's a consumable. Alright, so the way this looks to me is this looks like the ball nut. Or it, might, it does the same function as the ball nut. on like a ball screw. This basically holds the axis in place. And this is actually where the thread goes. If you're going to have any backlash, it's going to be in here. But that basically dictates it's going back and forth. This is moved the axis. So without that thing in there, I can this thing is just free spool. So now I gotta figure out where, where the end stop is. Don't know if it's there. But there's some kind of end stop that's preventing this from going all the way out. It's so heavy I can't just flip it around. <laughs> Kinda sucks. Alright, All right, I'm gonna start off with that. Since I have no manual, let's figure it out. So I figured out where the end stop was. I think it's preventing from coming out. It was, I couldn't even see it. It was caked in so much grease here. I didn't even know there was a hole there. So, yeah, once I got these little pins out of here, that was holding this thing in place. So now I can get past where I was at. Hopefully I can pull it out now. Can't do it with one hand, though. Alright, so pretty annoying. This little thing right here, I don't think it comes off. Um, it's like, look, it's, it's riveted on there. Hits this little case in here, the gear gearbox. So I gotta take these gears out. I'm just going to make her get a good video of it, so I know how to put it back together. Okay, this big one goes here. Uh, oh, 
was here. And hopefully there'll be wow. Yeah, it's just pure grease. And probably there'll be some screws behind there which I can pull this off. I might need to take that. And that's the main drive gear right there. It goes there's I guess there's a little shaft that goes through here and drive those motors over there. Because the control knobs over there on the air side. So there has to be a little shaft that goes across. See that moving back there? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take that gear off, most likely. Alright, I got to... Oh man, it's going to be a nightmare. I got to scrape all that stuff out of there. Alright, so when I put this back together, actually, I'm not going to even use this anyways. Just because uh, it didn't, well, it was, the guy didn't ever use it anyways. It wasn't even hooked up. So, um, yeah, I mean, if I wanted to do it later, I could put it back together, but like I said, CNC is the goal for this. Alright, so you can definitely tell, I mean, this overall quality of this thing is incredible. Um, yeah, huge difference between, like, the Japanese quality and uh, the Chinese quality, at least from the new stuff versus the old stuff. But, um, yeah, I love taking stuff apart and putting it back together. I like seeing how it works. Yeah, I just like the mindset of what they were doing 50 years ago. I'm looking at this screw. I got one, two, three. I think I'm all off. Um. All right, so that's the shaft that comes across. So it goes in that hole right there and feeds the other side and feeds the uh, those other gear sets over there. Yeah, the, the two different axes. So, like I said, I'm not going to be reusing that again. Um, but it doesn't even make sense to put a ball screw through there because, I mean, that's not really. A precise way of controlling this, these axes, you know. I'm gonna have to put a ball screw going this way uh, to be able to control it accurately, you know. Um, this side actually, well, this, I don't. I think this slide, the cross slide, should be probably a lot easier to convert over. But now I should be able to get this off now because that thing was hanging out before. All right, so here's a better look at the screw it comes through. Spin it over there. Yeah, you can still see it's, it's attached to the gears back there. You know, the motor gears. Uh, and then, I mean, it feels pretty sharp. Like, seeing that the threads are only back here, that's kind of a really interesting design. So, the, 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 the attachment point is back here. This thing, you know, threads on here like that, right? Um, but this is actually where it threads, you know? So, just trying to figure out how you put a ball screw in there. I guess I could reuse the existing screw. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess I, I could see much slack and in, in plays in there. Backlash, but yeah. I mean, look at the ways, man. Jeez. Wow. You know. Well, what's funny is they felt smooth though, so they didn't feel like they were. It wasn't didn't all feel all gritty. You know. Alright, and that is that part, so let's look underneath it. This thing's pretty heavy. Gotta make sure I don't whack the surface, it's too bad. Ouch, it's sharp. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. Okay, actually, no, that's not the way. Right here, that's the way. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay, that looks good. That's the, uh, Adjuster. I forgot the name of this piece. I'm an IT guy, not a CNC person, machinist, so <laughs> I don't know all the terminology. What's this thing that broken? Mm. Yeah, it looked like it was missing the adjuster piece right here. Like normally on the other one, I saw like a. Oh, they're in there. See them? Okay. Like the little adjuster, little Allen things right there. Okay, so yeah, it looked like there was multiple adjust, adjustment points, but, okay. Alright, so get that out of there. Alright, so I gotta figure out, I mean, I guess I can take that thing out, but yeah, I just want to get started one piece at a time, one section. The cool thing is some of the small stuff now I can put in my sandblaster. Get the uh, old paint off. Alright, so I forgot to film it. Ran pretty good out there. 
Um, all right, so I gotta take this cover off here. I took these, uh, that's the, the lever that actually locks on the, the, the motor, motor gear, but that thing had been disconnected for who knows how long, so. Um, so I'm taking these off here, and hopefully now that oil gushes out, it's an oil containment. All this gear, so the motor comes, shaft comes through here, and then it runs all these gears in here. My issue with the gears, I mean, this wouldn't make so much of a difference, you know, if you were just going 90, you know, back and forth, you know, and not making curved angles. Um, but all those gears that are tied in together create slop. And if you're trying to do a curved angle, man, it's slop is the last thing you want. So, um, I don't think I'm going to put any of this stuff back in there, the gears and stuff. I'm going to keep it empty. You just hook up a ball screw to it somewhere. Yeah, that would be like uh, all that play in there. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be precise. So um, you'd have to do some you'd have a serious backlash. But like I said, if you're just going back and forth like this, it's probably it doesn't it's not a big deal, you know. But once you start going like this and going back out again, yeah. So, I don't know if there's supposed to be like a seal on here or not, because there's a side glass here for oil. And so these guys weren't running any sort of oil in there. Um, yeah, it looks like you'd actually want the oil to be up to here. You know, it looks like there's a side glass on that side too, or something like that. That's where you put the oil in. So these guys are running this thing oilless for who knows how long, you know? But the gears still look like they're pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, not good, but I'm not gonna be using any of these gears, so. Um, gotta get all this other stuff out of here. So, oh yeah, this this is actually, uh, was part of the, uh, this is what turned this gear up here, the, was it, like, I'm not sure if it's X or Y. Still, I'm still new to Lay's. Um, all right, so that can come off too. That's the drive gear that actually drive the access. Um, but yeah, there's just so much. All these little teeth, you know. Every single one has slop. See that? Who knows how much slop was in this thing, you know? Every single gear tooth, slop. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to be good enough for CNC. I mean, yeah, maybe. I don't know, but that would not good enough for me. Got the carriage back on, nice and smooth. Made the adjustments here. I think it's called the gimbal. I can't remember what that's called. Uh, I'm new to ways, ways. All the stuff I've done previously has all been ball screws. Not ball screws, but linear rails. Um, all right. So put the top on, the cross slide. I right, got the cross slide on. So now I got to go back, put the turn on. Just keep on moving. Then I gotta figure out. Well, I'll get into that. All right, guys, making some progress here. So this is gonna be the end of part three. I'll give you a quick walk around what I'm doing here. But this is the turret, obviously. So I had the carriage back together. Uh, at least the most of it that I, I'm actually gonna put back together. Um. So now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put the ball screws at. So I'm gonna need to have the uh, X. I can't remember if this is Y or Z. Yeah, I'm kind of new to lay so. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe putting the ball screw down this side, all the way down here. Um, this is not a very long travel, so I'm not going to be too worried about it, but you can see my keyboard monitor mount here. So that's my keyboard mount, Logitech, and then, uh, yeah, this is all 3D printed stuff. I'll put, the, I'll put all the stuff on my Thingiverse page if you want it. Um, but yeah, this is for a Logitech keyboard. Alright, um, alright, so this is how it works. I'll leave that. And actually, the, the detent spring on this thing was broken, so it never long, no longer really didn't have a detent. So I fixed the detent. But what's weird is some way seeing when you pop them down, like a, like a different, uh, either the Sagami or the Hardinge, will actually automatically turn this. I wish this one would did that because then I would create like an actuator 
right here that will automatically flip this thing around, flip the the uh, turret around. So now I got to figure out a way to automate the turret too. But uh, yes, yeah, so I need to put up. Uh, I think I maybe I'll put it right here. Maybe I got to maybe create some sort of adapter. I don't really want to drill holes if I don't have to. And there's already plenty of holes and, and things to mount and stuff. Like even down here. Um, yeah, but I can't use that for the the, the ball screw. Um, yeah, the, the the threading issue, the threading thing was really interesting on the on these on these lathes. Um, it wasn't like your typical lathe, like a like a ball screw or like a lead screw that had a, a gear mechanism in the back. The threading attachment used to be up here, and it would hook up to this thing. So this thing actually really wasn't designed for threading too much, but they did actually sell a threading attachment. Um, all right, I'm a little off track here, but now I can. Start focusing on the electronics. I got the majority of this stuff done. I got to do the uh, Mach 3 board. And uh, all right, so this ended part three. Uh, moving on to part four electronics.